Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. <laughs> Welcome, all my friends, to Couch Pilots, the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, the Bottle Cap Kid, and I'm sitting across a table from Blake Clayton, the podcasting god. Hello. Hi, Blake. Hey, how are you, buddy? Yeehaw! (laughs) Yeehaw, let's get in the spirit. Let's get in the spirit of today's show. Oof, how are you? I'm glad to be here. Me too. Because um, it's my house, and that would be really weird if you were here and I wasn't. <laughs> I'm glad you're here in your house. I would never want to be caught here with you not here. I have a tickle in my throat, so I apologize to all the listeners if there's some, some dryness or some scratchiness. But I have, I have a, some kind of dry tickle in my throat. What do you think that is from? Is it like a lodged Dorito? Uh, I think uh, it's just really dry in here. What, what can, do you have a humidifier? Uh, yeah, it's in the storage unit. I have to go get it. I bought a, I bought a filter for it. I don't know anything about humidifiers. All I know is usually it's a glass bowl full of water, and then steam comes out of it. Is that pretty much it? Uh, no, there's no steam comes out of it. That's a humidifier. That's what I was saying. Oh, wait, yeah. But you there's, want... no, there's no steam. What is it? How does, how does a humidifier work? Dehumidifier, you want to take the moisture out of the air, but you're saying it's too dry in here, so you want to rehydrate the air. Right, so you put the water in it, yeah. and a fan blows, a fan blows, and it... Put some moisture in the air. So there's no steam. No, I just don't get hot. There's no steam. Okay, I didn't know if it converts the water. I, I don't know. I, this is why people tune in, right? To the show? Right. They, they need to do it. What do you do when your uh, townhouse is too dry? That's, I, I'm What's glad. this name of the episode? Townhouse Too Dry. Townhouse Too Dry. Oh, boy. 2016. Here we are. Man, we're just barreling through it already. I love the new year. What are you going to do differently this year? Um... I have decided that I'm going to stop like saying Jesus Christ and God damn it. Oh, I remember you saying that recently. Yeah, I'm uh, working wh- on it. Why is that again? Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I'm not really a religious person. Mm-hmm. I, I just, I think it's, I think it's kind of disrespectful to people around me that might be. What were we going to say in lieu of those things? Um, gosh darn it! Seems like the cop out. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm going to try not to be as, get, just get as frustrated. Well, what if you just say rats? I was. Shuckle bucks, shuckle bucks. Uh, oh, hamburgers. Um, Farfagnugan. Farfagnugan. That's a good one. Um, I don't know. I'm a believer in y- you have to get it out. You're saying try not to get that frustrated. I, maybe I don't know. Is that a, you have to get in the right frame of mind not to be frustrated, or do you need to let emotions out, or it's going to bottle up and kill you? Well, I, I can I can hit my wife. Oh, okay. I just can't say Jesus Christ. <laughs> So you think you would offend more people by saying Jesus Christ than you would by abusing your own wife physically? Yeah, I wouldn't hit her. She'd beat the shit out of me. I think she would. She's got a low center of gravity. She could take you down. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with her. I've seen her mom fight before. Wow. Does she... Okay. Um, I want to tread lightly. Um, all right. Okay, so tell that story. <laughs> all right. Well, well, there's there's things I know. Well, I just it, it was a couple <laughs> Christmases ago. And one of the kids, one of the grandkids, had taken the last sh- of the sugar cookies because every year they make cookies as a family. Mm-hmm. And of course, the sugar cookies get ate first because they're the only good ones. What are the other cookies? Oh, they're all, I don't even know the names of them. They're just all gross. They're the ones with the peanut butter and they the don't chocolate matter. kiss on top? No, no, no. They, oh, okay. The rest of these don't matter. Okay. And the kid takes it and she's washing dishes. With dish- I'm sorry. I'm having some trouble talking. Let's get a, let's get a humidifier in here. But uh, she's washing dishes. Kid, little grandkid comes up from you know behind her, takes the last sugar cookie, and she just, without even looking, just turns around and punches that kid square in the nose on purpose. On purpose, yeah. Just like you need to take the last cookie, and knocks the kid falls on the ground. How old's the kid? Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's go by months. Uh, Two hundred thirty months old. Two hundred. Wow. So deep, early forties. <laughs> So, so I just I, basically right about uh, to make a, make a short story long. Yeah, Molly could probably beat me up. 
So I would, I would maybe I should just go, just go back. To and her mom's a monster, apparently. I just should just go back to saying, "God damn it!" <laughs> that would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> and I mean, you've settled into a life where you've offended people by saying that you're anyway. So you're familiar with the life of saying, "God damn it!" Right? Right. But I'm just trying to be. I don't know. I just think I'm trying to be a better person. Isn't that what the new year's supposed to bring for the first month and a half? You're supposed to be a better person until you get your income tax back. You, you're a good person. What do you do then? Oh, you go to the strip club, <laughs> buy crack cocaine. God, buy, I am, stuff, buy stuff you don't can't afford. You know what's funny is that people who do that, they st- they're still alive. They still walk around, have fun. Yeah. Suckers like me, when my income tax comes back, I just dump it all into my credit card debt. Yeah. What? what why? You're you. Ha- you have morals. You're responsible. That's why I'm friends with you. But it's not paying off for me in any way. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, it's getting you through the year before. I, I I guess I am surviving, but I guess the people who are doing I don't even there, have a credit card, Jason. I can't even pay it oh, off. You have no credit card. Well, see that that already you're ahead of me. Then if you have no credit card to pay off, that you're ahead of me. No, I'm not because during the year I don't have any money. But aren't you still happy and you, you're living a life of of fun and uh, excitement? I love my life. See? My life. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I feel like I need. But to... I feel like I I feel I love my life my life, but I really wish I was like back in the old west. Oh, I see. Times were I see what's happening. Times were simple. Okay, well, then. let's talk about that. Enough, enough banter. I don't want to talk to you anymore about your personal issues. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. All right. Okay. Here's the real deal. Uh, Blake and I click on links and we watch predominantly crap pilot episodes of TV shows of the past that never turn into a series because they are predominantly crap. Uh, we're going to watch TV shows from the 1970s, the 80s, and 90s, and the 2000s and uh, break them down so hard. And after that, if we feel like it, we'll circle back around and do whatever the hell we want because we have no bosses and no one can tell us not to watch garbage television. Right, right. We, we, right? we do what we want. Yeah, I mean, we kind of have a plan of how we're going to do it, but after that, who cares? Who's going to stop us? Even if Charles came in here, I'd be like, you're not in charge. It's me and Jason. We make the decisions. And ultimately, to be honest with you, yeah. if you told me... I. I make the decisions. Yeah. You know, Charles in charge, he was in charge of our days and our nights. Right. But what about our dawns and our dusks? Right. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can do whatever we want during that period, exactly. right? If we want to record and watch crappy shows, like if we wanted to watch crappy shows at dawn and at dusk record, who, he's not in charge of us then. Nope, not even close. He, he doesn't even need to come in the room. Oh, boy. That was that, maybe the last hit he had, right, Scott so, Baio? Yeah. God bless him. He's, out, he's trying. You know, you know, he's on. He's on a TV show right now. He's on a Disney Channel show. Did you know that? Oh, that's where that's where they go to, to end their career. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. If you if you don't have anything going, you become a parent on a Disney show. That's yep. fine. Everyone, it's a job. Everyone's got to work. Yep. He's got bills to pay. Disney. I mean, I wonder if they get free admission to Disney. Oh, I that that'd be top of my list on my writer and my my contract. Free admission for yep. life at yep. Disney. Um, today is a show I was excited about for several reasons. One, available on YouTube. Oh, it's, we have three criteria. We have three. It's the per system, right? Right. Pick a show, eat a show, rate a show. Right. Is that right? That's, I don't know why we eat it, but it, it worked out. That's that, You know what? We're seven shows in. hasn't worked for us once yet, eating <laughs> What um so what what is our system though what do we do uh we what determines whether or not we should be reviewing and talking about and watching a show is it available mm-hmm. for free right that's two is it available yeah for free for free and uh, did it not go to series correct right those are the three things right and this did all of those things uh, so it's available and um, it's only a half hour that helps oh I, I saw that I was so excited Jason I felt like you <laughs> gave me a Christmas present again. What was the first? What do you mean again? What was the first one? Your friendship. Oh, well, you're, you're, a, you're a real sweetheart. Yeah. I don't care what your own wife says about you to your face. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> um, and uh, another reason, L- Louis Gossett Jr. Uh, actually, it's actually Lou Gossett. Is that Louis? No, it's Lou Gossett. In the credits, at the beginning, it's Lou Gossett. How's it, how's Lou spelled? L O U. Really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you ever you ever watch Boys in the Hood? Oh yeah, a long time ago. We know him today as Give Lu- my brother's ball back. <laughs> Proof positive that you have seen oh, Boys in the Hood. <laughs> Man, give him my brother's ball back. Um, as we know him today, uh, most famously probably for uh, the, his role of Morbius in the uh, uh, Matrix movies, Lawrence Fishburne, right? Right. Um, 
in back in the days of like Pee Wee's Playhouse when he was Cowboy Curtis and the yeah. Boys in the Hood, he was he was billed then as Larry Fishburne, huh. just as Lou Gossett Jr. is now billed or Lou, Lou Gossett is now billed as Louis. Okay. Is it Louis Gossett Jr.? I think so. Okay, I think, I think he became a grown man. Yeah, that's right. He went through puberty and became a man. Right, and as we all do. And his dad was Lou Louis as well. Louis Gossett Sr. Yeah. Um. Where do you want to watch this? Where 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 could one find this? Oh, where on the internet? Right. Oh, we have the YouTube channel. I mean, the YouTube page that we found. Um, you go to our show notes, and it has the link. It has the link last week and this week. Yep. The show notes. Always check out our show notes for the easiest links. That way, you don't have to even click on YouTube. Where are the show notes? Are they on the FCF page? Uh, there. Whenever you get, uh, whenever you subscribe, yeah, or uh, listen to an episode, they'll be right there with. It, on any podcast app you use, they're right there. That it's like the easiest. We do all we do all the work for you. I've said it before. I, the only thing, other thing I can do is come to your house, mm-hmm. click, turn your computer on, yeah, type in your password, uh, wait for it to wait for the internet and the Internet Explorer, right? Open Internet Explorer, type in yes. my Gmail account, yes, or uh, go to go type in fcfnetwork dot com, yep. Then go to the show pages. It's I mean. I you. It sounds to me like you're putting it on the table. Would you do that for me? Would you come to my house, log into my computer, first clear out the inter- internet history before you do anything else? Right. Cause and then, I, not, no, no, because don't worry about that. <laughs> don't worry why you're clearing it out. Just know that you are. Okay. And then watching it. Does that make me an accessory <laughs> to whatever? Uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose it would. Yeah. I suppose it would. Yeah. Uh, have you ever found that like? You can be watching porn on the internet, and just sometimes it just, you just go, you fall into this really, really dark hole of stuff you shouldn't be watching. And then, you hmm. don't, at the time, you don't feel guilty about it, but maybe the next day you're like, ah, I probably shouldn't, have, probably shouldn't have watched that. Yeah, your morals, depending on which side of an orgasm you're on, your morals right. vary wildly. Right. Um, yeah, I think we talked on IBWIP a while ago how I would, I went into like one of those chat rooms, yeah. like with a live camera thing. Yeah. I don't know how it works, but it was fun. It was fun to go in there. Sure. I was just cracking jokes. I was trying. I was just trying to be funny in a chat room. Right, and that's it. Remember the old days on AOL, and that's what it was. It was all about being funny and picking up little kids. <laughs> wow. I don't know about that. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Oh, I forgot. I always have to forget that uh, the noise of the plane taking off now. No, oh, there it is. Oh my gosh! This is this is where I get excited. Like the show doesn't start until we have this. It r- really ramps up for you here. Yeah. I think I can hear your heart beating faster. That's Molly standing behind you. It, <laughs> she's da- her she, chest is dangerously close to the back of my head. I'm gonna have to reach back and hit her like she's stealing a cookie. Um, the uh, I, I misspoke at the end of our last episode concerning what exactly. Black Bart, the half-hour failed TV pilot, was. I said that it inspired the movie Blazing Saddles. It's actually vice versa that this is a Western spoof concerning the adventures of a black sheriff and his fast-drawing sidekick fighting corruption and bigotry in the Old West based on the feature film Blazing Saddles from 1974. This was from 1975. So this said, let's piggyback on the success of something good, and in turn, we will make something similar but bad. Right. Uh, 1975, uh, the year I was born. Oh, so how old were you then? I was I was a half. Okay, and at this point, if we're judging how old we are based on this, I would have been uh, negative six. Okay, not a bad age. No, the um, I think when so you're raising, there's, there's you, no responsibilities whatsoever. Right, you've raised a couple children, mm-hmm. and you can. I'm sure you look back at them and like, oh wow, that that was a good age. That right there when they could do that thing, that was a good age. Yep. I, for me, negative six. Oh yeah, good age. Negative six. Oh, I remember those days. Yeah, pre-birth. Yep, I was still smoking cigarettes and. I didn't have a care in the world. I had tons of money. Bathing in the primordial ooze. Oh yeah, I was getting tons of money. I got, yeah, I was. I had tons of money before I had children. <laughs> I had poontang to the left of me. Well, what about your right? What was there? I had poontang to the right of me. It's completely surrounded. Yep. Poontang had circumnavigated you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Those were the days. Those uh, Black Bart uh, released on April fourth in the year of our Lord nineteen seventy five. Oh shit! So I was only fifteen days old actually. Oh yeah, your birthday is in March fifteenth. Okay, all right, the Ides of March. Yeah. So I wasn't a half. I was. I was. I, I probably still had goop 
like in my eyes and stuff. In like, my mouth. Yeah, a lot of a lot of afterbirth. Mm-hmm. Maybe an umbilical, in my hair. maybe shreds of an umbilical cord just kind of dangling from your person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the umbilical cord hadn't fallen off yet by the time this came out. So let's let's go back in time for a second. Caesar born or Caesar murdered. Mm-hmm. Ides of March. Ides of March. Yep. A few hundred years later, maybe a thousand years later, boom! Blake Clayton born. Ironically, isn't it? That's right. Do you relate to Caesar at all in that way? Yeah. <clears throat> um, wear a lot of leaves around your ears. No, 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 no. I, I wear a cloth, and I, I I've been stabbed in the back by friends. <laughs> uh, metaphorically or literally? Oh, literally. I'll show you the scar. There's one right here. Oh my! Look at that. Yeah. That one actually. That one does not seem to have healed correctly. <laughs> Nothing on me heals correctly. <laughs> originally, the pilot um, it says teleplay. I don't know what that means. It, originally, this was supposed to be called Super Dude, which I am so glad it wasn't. Ugh. Super Dude. That wouldn't even been a good title for our last show, Exo Man. Right. <laughs> I don't know where they get that Super Dude. There's nothing super, and they do say dude a couple times in it. But I guess in the seventies, late seventies, like, cool dude. But wasn't a dude? Didn't that mean something else back in, in the western in western times, like in the, in the eighteen? A dude ranch. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, like uh, a bunch of guys at a ranch. Uh, the main role, which ended up being Black Bart, was called Johnny Diggs, and the three actors uh, in, in mind for the role were Louis Gossett Jr., who obviously got it, um, and then Richard Pryor. Oh, that that could have been better. Yep. Then by that, at this point in the mid seventies. Um, prior, probably approaching his full potential, his full, maybe he was too expensive for the show. Could be. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he was, you know, at that time, Pryor was, had had let go of the clean, you know, uh, politically correct comedy. At this time, keeping it real. This was getting really raw Re- dog. Really raw, yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, uh, or could have gone to Cleavon Little, which... I think we might we have an a, a ga- age gap between us. Do you, do you know who Cleavon Little is? If I saw a picture of him, he's that he's that that um, little person in Bad Santa. That's the one. Yeah, that could have gone to him. That black guy. Yeah. Okay, put the elf. Hey, you know what? Maybe we're not so different after all. <laughs> uh, for the role of Bell, um, and Bell was the the one eyed whore, I believe. Yeah, the one that had the accent. Could have gone to Sally Kellerman, who I think I want to say she plays the mom on. Mark Marin's TV show, Sally Kellerman. Oh. Um, Tammy Grimes, don't know her, or Amanda Blake were all considered. Oh, Amanda Blake is my cousin. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you relate, so people, you're related to people with the same first name as you. Robert Blake. Okay. Blake Downey Jr.? Right. Blake um, Shemansky? Blake Shemansky from uh, Drunken Lullaby, sure. Uh, finally, Burt... Bert Remsen, Lou Frizzle, and Sorel Book were considered for the part of Mayor Malaga. Uh, the, now, that mayor is the same mayor that was in Blazing Saddles, I think, right? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, he seemed very familiar. These, All these facts, uh, except for the Richard Pryor one, not very interesting, but they're facts nonetheless, and, we, and these are the only facts I could find. We have an obligation right. to our listener mm-hmm. that we give them facts. They We... We, it's not for us to judge the no, facts. No, Do not judge facts, because if you do, you might as well just have a, another four years of that's Obama. That's a rabbit hole you're going to go down. Another four years of Obama. No, no, and no one wants that. I mean, who wants a black president to begin with, let alone one for 12 years? <laughs> that fits perfectly with this episode. <laughs> this, yeah, this, this, uh, this show is wildly racist. And uh, I'm just kidding. I love our half-black president. He's, he, he does a fine job. You know, as, as long as I can wake up in the morning, I can choose what I want to eat, choose where I want to go. I have no problems with what the president's yeah. doing, you know? It doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect my day-to-day. God bless him. But if you if you put restrictions on e-juice, I'm fucking coming to your house. Blake will knock on your door. He, he is a, a... He is a... I mean, talk Come about on scars. knock on my door. Dun, 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 dun. We've been waiting for you. Dun, 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 dun. Where the kisses are hers and hers and his. Three's company, too. The kisses? Those are the lyrics? I think so. The kisses are hers and hers and his? I think so. I have, no, uh, I, no, you might be right. Again, this is where the age gap comes in. You're more familiar with Three's Company. Again, than I am. facts. It's not for us to judge. So, uh, you know what? You like Suzanne Summers, or who was that other bra? That was. Well, like, I, I like the dark hair lady. Me too. Mm-hmm. She was. Yeah. Uh, something. I don't the big know. eyes. Is I, I like big eyes. I, I women. I like abnormally large eyes, like problematically huge yeah, like eyeballs. If, if, if all those hobbits would have been girls in that movie, I would have oh. watched all the Lord of the Rings. Oh, I'm yeah. not watching it because they're boys, but those big eyed little hobbits, <laughs> they were girls. Oh boy! Um, 
what what happened in this show? Let's 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 get into that. We read the summary. We got some interesting facts. Let's. What was our takeaway from this show? <clears throat> uh, are we talking about the plot? Yeah. Uh, there's a black sheriff. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of racist jokes. Yeah. Uh, the townspeople don't like what he did, and he gets uh, tied up with an Indian. Yeah. Uh, then he gets untied, and it's all out of witty humor. He gets out of everything. Every, everybody gets out of everything with witty jokes. Yeah. Uh, there's a laugh track, our second laugh track show of... of the laugh track... Oh, more it just it, that's talk about exclamation points. That's the 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 exclamation point on the racist jokes. Mm-hmm. Like the the jo- it, the things that they're saying are obviously racist, but then once they put that laugh track in there right. after they drop the end bomb, how many times? Uh, three and a half times. Three and a half times. They th- think about this, folks. Uh, in the seventies, nineteen seventy-five. Yeah, they tried to uh, do a spinoff show from Blades and Settles of a black sheriff. And they use the word "n," uh, three and a half times. Yeah, blatantly. Not. Yeah. It wasn't gangbangers saying it. It wasn't the black person saying it. It was all white people saying it to the black person. There, I think there was. I, I, I'm gonna get. I think I'm gonna get this wrong. I think Richard Pryor was hosting Saturday Night Live in the mid to late '70s, and, and I, I want to say I want to say it was him and Chevy Chase. So if it was Chevy Chase, it would have been the first season because I think sure. that's when he was on, just right. the first season. And there's a, a scene where they're sitting across from each other in a like an, I don't know if it's an interview situation or what, but across from each other in a desk, and they're they're throwing racial slurs back and and forth. And I think Chevy Chase calls Richard Pryor a nigger at some point and calls him like a tar baby. So these things I guess could be said on TV. I don't think it's progressive that they could do it back then, and we can't do it now. Maybe it's progressive. I don't know, but you you would you would not hear that on TV today, right? Like I guess you. I don't. I mean, did they ever use the word like "fag" on TV? But I mean, you wouldn't hear that now, or would you? You, would, you wouldn't hear it now, like especially in a comedy, right? Like it's because you can't make light of racial slurs or homophobic phrases. You could you could probably get it in a drama now. Sure. Um, especially if you look like HBO or something, it, but a white guy saying the N word in a derogatory manner, right? Like I just said it a moment ago, but obviously I'm not making fun of the sure. situation. You're not you're not looking at one and saying something and, and putting them down right. or saying, "Oh, you 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 messed this up because you're a blank." Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So or you didn't you know you didn't have a job because you're a blank. Everything is so PC. Or you're not dating a white girl because you're a blank. Yeah. Yeah. That, wait. What? You're dating white girls because you're blank. Okay. I gotcha. You really, I'm not saying that. You, you really went to town on those. Well, I want to make sure again. Facts. We we are we represent facts. Yeah, we don't we don't judge how the facts, what their potential no, they, is. They or, come in front of us. They stand in front of us, and it's, we it's our duty. We we don't judge a fact by a color, creed, racial, uh, uh, or, uh, or gender. Yeah, nothing. Or their, yeah, not, every uh, fact is a fact, and that's all we. That's, can that's do. all it is. Um, this this show was not that great. Uh, some other some of the white people called uh, Black Bart. They called him boy. They said boy a lot, which is yeah. very de- uh, derogatory towards a black there's, person. There's a lot of a, a lot of slave references. Oh, oh yeah. At one point, he's like hopping around the mayor's office saying "Yes, massa," yeah, and acting like he was. I I don't know. I feel like in a comedy that is very difficult to do. Well, in the first scene, the black guy is sweeping off the. The, the porch, I guess. Yeah. And the white guy comes up and says, "Hey, I want to see the sheriff." He goes, "He goes, no problem, that's a, You know, he just he he was already doing stereotypical yeah. stuff. Then comes up, comes out as the uh, black sheriff, black yeah. Bart. Yeah. And then the white guy looks astonished. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought that would kind of be it. Oh, the end of the racial humor. Yeah, I thought it was like, okay, we'll get this one joke out of the way because we're itching to do it. Yeah, we'll get it out of the way and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll do some funny stuff. They call him Spook. The laugh track is always busting in at the racial jokes. That that's it leans heavily on that. The horse is called Whitey. Oh yeah, Whitey the horse. And then the horse is all white, of course. Um, the did you did you see when he first went to the bar in the beginning where like the guy he was shooting at the floor and you know how they'd say dance and he yeah. shoot the guy looked like he was just walking in place. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't have to. I, I'm not that really good of a dancer. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm or maybe just wasn't that scared of the bullets. <laughs> maybe just like Curly. Uh, Curly was a bad shot. He was, yeah, and terrible. He was awful. Uh, the one-eyed whore. I think she said uh, she said she wanted to give the mayor kissy kissy. Yeah, yeah, that was you know, like 
Uh, if you're going to use the N-word, uh, why don't you say sex or... Yeah, let me take you back and... Do it. Let's do it or something. It's funny, yeah. Like, what, let's what do they, a laughing kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's funny what they can get away... What, right. what was uh, acceptable and what wasn't. Um, that line's always changing. Uh, they were in Paris, Arizona. I don't know if that's a real place or not. Um, you, ever been to, you ever been to Arizona in general? No, I have not. No, me neither. Uh, he's the only black sheriff in the West. Yeah, that was funny. That was a funny joke. Um, I think he was in... Oh, he's, when he's talking to the sheriff, the sheriff almost dropped the N-bomb on him. And then he yep. o- then he almost called him colored. You kept going, eh? eh? And then he said black. I think right, right. right. The the going back to the 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 only, the only black sheriff, you know, in the mm-hmm. West, because the mayor's like, he's the, the sheriff's asking for a raise, and the mayor's right. like, you're the highest paid black sheriff in the you know in the West. Yeah. He's like, I'm the only black sheriff yeah. in the West. Yeah, so, it was a funny joke. It, Every the laugh track too is like in between when he said, when he dropped the n bomb and stopped he's like N-, and then uh, the laugh track kicked in and right. then when he said when he stopped him from saying colored all the way the laugh track yep. went in there and I was just like this is terrible <laughs> this is really bad um, and then they were calling white people honkies and pink nose I think yeah pink nose that was one I had never I've never heard that either mm. is maybe that was I don't know maybe maybe they did a little bit of research and found that's what they called them back then. Uh, the, uh, red-headed Irish guy was a drunk. Red. Oh, the, uh, the deputy or his, mm-hmm. like, yeah. Yep. He was, you know, the typical yeah. Irish drunk. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically, just, just real quick, the plot, the, the sheriff goes in, he busts a dude who's like, co- like nephew Cousin. of the mayor, or cousins of the mayor. He wants, he takes this guy who's shooting up the bar. He takes him to jail. Uh, they, someone breaks him out of jail while Black Bart's out on something. That Black Bart takes uh, this Indian character. I don't know where he yeah, came from. He, just, he, he was he was standing there when uh, they were showing him the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That, okay. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. He lighted a cigarette. Was what they you know. Lit, lit oh cigarette. yeah. When he shot the cigarette. That's right. He was. That was him. So he, him and this Indian character are out in the woods. They're hunting down Curly who was shooting up the bar. Uh, Curly and his men capture Black Bart and the Indian. The one-eyed whore comes out. Bell. She uh, frees them. They go back. Have a trial. Uh, Curly ex- gets off, right? Doesn't he? Gets off on uh, the shooting of, right. the, of the guy, and then the twist is, he goes, "Oh, that trial's over. Oh, we'll have another one." And they he goes to trial for breaking out of jail, right? And beating up a cop, beating up a cop, and then uh, and that's pretty much the end. Yeah, it's only a half hour long. Um, where do you start? Uh, Luke Gossett. Uh, would you in the nineteen seventies, mid seventies? Would you take this role? Uh, you're you're a young, inspiring actor, right? You yeah. really you haven't done anything noteworthy yet, right? Would you take this role just for a paycheck? I mean, to me, there's some black pride that doesn't get, that gets thrown away because of some dollar sign. It's tough to boy, so many things to consider. You know, if he, if he's a, a young black man in, in the mid seventies trying to have an acting career, trying to put right now, and you know, in 2016, trying to put our minds in the cultural mindset of the of the mid 70s. Right now, you look at it and you're like, "Oh, that's that's terrible. Why would he ever do that?" But I don't know what it would have been right. frowned on back right. then. It obviously wasn't good enough to go to air, and we can talk about why the show didn't work in just a, a moment here. Um, but it obviously was it was not good enough to go to air. No. So um, let's, let's listen to a quick promo for IBWIP, one of my favorite shows, and we'll be right back. For over eight years, Blake Clayton, the podcasting god, has brought you the best in roots music, adult comedy, and real talk with his ever-revolving cast of co-hosts in the form of It Burns When IP. Join one of the true podcast originators, along with intern Heather and the Bottle Cap Kid, as they play games, interview interesting characters, and just maybe uncover the meaning of life. New episodes of IBWIP can be found every Friday on the Fakakta Comedy Network. Check us out at fcfnetwork.com and join in on the fun. That's a good show. I like that show. Yeah. I'm on that show. Are you? I've been on, I would say I've been on about half of them. Yeah. Now. What, what number of shows are we at? Two? Uh, six... What? what? How uh, you, oh, you mean the number of IBWIPs? Yeah, how many of those we've done? Uh, by this time, it'll be like 634 or 635. 634? Uh, 234. Oh, I was like, jeez. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I was out of it for a while. 
That's a good show. Check check out IBWIP.com. Again, just like all the other shows on FCF Network, go to iTunes, subscribe, leave us a comment, uh, rate the show. All of that helps out. And if you really want to help the show out, too, you can also hit the donate button. Mm. Um, all that helps. This isn't free. I mean, it is for you to listen, but it's not free for us to do. So we'll take any, if you want to throw just some change. So put some change. Shillings. Yeah put, yeah, put some shillings on your desk at the end of the month. Just take your hand and move them all to the end of the desk into your hand, and then take them to the bank and say, "I want to donate this to IBW." They'll know exactly what you exactly, mean. and it does help because, like today, it's the first of the year, first of the month. Mm-hmm. Uh, our Lipson bill was due, and we paid that, but uh, we won't be able to pay it so easily in a couple months. Uh oh, uh oh, uh, we're looking to you, Dustin. Uh, <laughs> help us out. Um, so many reasons this show didn't work. I'm just gonna I'm gonna sum it up by saying two things, I guess. Just racist, which may not have been a factor at the time, uh, but just not very funny. No, it was uh, very predictable, and I think Blazing Saddles uh, that it was spawned from uh, that is a movie. That's something you see at a theater. That's something you know. What I mean that 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 was its own entity. It had it had stereotypes. It had racism in it. But it was funny. Yeah. Um, and if it's not the same people working on it, and you're trying to do a spinoff of something, and it's not the same people working on it, it the chances are you're going to miss. Right. And I think, I think Mel Brooks, he would have made this funny if he would have been asked to, hey, why don't you help write, write this? But I, Sure. I mean, um, I think that, that chasm over the past few years has closed quite a bit from, uh, you know, Big TV or uh, TV stars to big movie stars. Right. Back then, the chasm was huge. You know, it was like if you're on movies, you don't do TV, and vice versa. Uh, a lot of times, if a, a movie is very popular, does very well, and they want to make a TV version of it or a TV knockoff of it, a lot of times the people from the movie do not participate in the TV show, right. and which makes it tough. Um, I think in theory it's a good idea. Blazing Saddles did well. I'm not a Mel Brooks fan personally. I might be crucified in some circles for saying that, but again, it was the, it was the comedy of the time. Right? Yeah, definitely the comedy and, of the time. And so, so I mean that, that Mel Brooks movies have a, a, a comedic stink on them from that era that I, I personally don't care for, and I'd probably be killed for saying I don't like Monty Python either. But that's those are eras that I I don't appreciate essentially, but. It was a good idea because at the time it was popular. Why not draft off of something that was popular? Try to make a TV show of it. Yeah, but you got you just got to have people involved. At least one, you know, you have to have some kind of staple from one to go into the other. Right. This did even not even if it was the even if it was Betty was that was it what, Bell Bell the, even if it was whore? and it was that was Zsa Zsa Gavor, wasn't it? I have not seen Blazing Saddles. You are an idiot. I think I have it at home. I, I, I do want to watch it to say Savoir I've seen it. Savoir Fed is everywhere. I, I don't get the reference. <laughs> I don't get that. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, Mel Brooks. Do you like his other movies? Uh, I take them for what they are. Like uh, what? Young Fra- uh, Frankenstein, right? That's yeah, one. Yeah. Blazing Saddles. Spaceballs. Uh, oh, man. That, I see. I do not care for that. Yeah. Um, any other ones? I, I'm sure there are plenty that I'm just. Yeah, there's one like, but I don't. I, don't know. I know. Did he do the producers with? Uh, I know. I know he did the play, but yeah. when the movie came out, did he direct that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Too bad we don't have some type of large, endless well, a place where knowledge is. Someday. 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 Someday we'll, we'll have that. that. Yeah, th- th- this was a super racist. Uh, like I said at the time, I don't know, but it just it was corny. I think uh, in the seventies, what I'm noticing is the comedies were very, very corny. Yeah, and the rest of them were v- really cheesy sci-fi. They're, they they hadn't really found a, a realistic point to them. You know what I mean? I, I think at one point my mind my mindset was there's only three networks back then. Just put the best stuff out there. Right. A million people could be coming to you saying, "Do this, do this." Just put the best stuff out there. But it could be as simple as we could put whatever we want out there because there's only three networks. Right. We could do whatever we want to. Yeah. These these are just to fill we fill got, time between commercials. We've got so much money. Let's just slap throw money. And back then, in TV, they were they would throw money at any idea. Now it's not it's not like that. Now, yeah, yeah if you didn't have like 20 million people watching, right? You know, then your show is probably going to cancel. Now, right. now if you get a half a million people, it could be it could be a success sure. because there's just so many different avenues, right? So many different outlets. 
they don't even take into consideration like the, watching it on the internet stuff. Yeah. What would you do to improve this show? Uh, I would bring in some uh, uh, at least one or two actors. Maybe not. Maybe not the big actors from Blazing Saddles. Just but side recognizable characters. Side recognizable ac- uh, actors. Um, try to get somebody like the Richard Pryor. You could get him in there, right? Oh, he was this. He was that. The, that would have. It, it would have went to series with Richard Pryor. It would have went to series. Yeah, I mean, he went on to obviously be a movie star of that era. Oh yeah. Um, so again, that chasm. But he, yeah, I think he could have helped push it the series. I think that I, I don't know if it was realistic or not to get approval to call the series Blazing Saddles, but if they could have done that and attached that name to sure. the series, that would have helped probably. Yeah. Um, maybe take out some of that racist stuff. Yeah, it, the it, racial it, stuff is now you can. I would have been acceptable with stereotypes. I think stereotypes and racism are two different things, right? And, and to a certain extent, um, and that's you know that I think you could have edged off the actual all the slave stuff. There's so many. Slave yeah. references. There are smart ways to do it, and they're just these are lazy jokes, lazy racial yeah. jokes. Yeah, this is a, a hey, we're going to slap this together in a week and see what happens. Um, this, say say it went to series, in it, in its current form, what would you? Where would you have liked it to seen it gone? Where where the, where could the show have, have have taken you that you would have liked to have seen it? I think it was going to be one of those things where like each episode kind of focused on a, a different character. You know, everybody was still involved, but mm-hmm. kind of show. The uh, show more in depth each character because you just had a lot of you just had a lot of people on there. You don't know their backstory. You don't know how, where they came from. You know you don't know what they're they're like. And it's just maybe that that's where I would see. It had like a Dukes of Hazard feel to me. Like it was you know the the mayor and the law going against each other a little bit. Where you know they had the Duke boys and. Boss Hog or whatever right. he was going going against them, so it had kind of a Dukes of Hazard feel, kind of a, kind of a lighthearted. Um, boy, and, at the end of at the end of every episode, there they no matter how much they, how much they don't like each other, they're still all hanging out. Yeah, yeah they're still yeah they'll still bite drink with each other right. or something. You know, oh, boy. Um, let's let's see what the let's see what some of the critics had to say about this show. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent. Please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. You were very quick to say thank you for this only being a half hour. Yes. Um, to me, that puts it ahead already of some of the things we saw, just because it wasn't as long. Right. We'd have to sit through some something that was bad for 90 minutes right. versus maybe 23, 26 minutes, whatever this was. Um, because I, I feel like, okay – if you're writing a script for an hour show, okay, you've got some stuff to work with, but you still need to keep it tight. Mm-hmm. In a half hour show, you really need to be on point with the writing. Like you need to get you need to get somewhere, you need to get there quick, and then you need it. You know. Um, so to me, I would think that you, as a writer, it's more work. But if, it, if to do a half hour, but if you're good, you can pull a half hour off. Yeah, a shitty writer, such as you know, th- these were these. This wasn't written well. This is not good. Um, I would I would have scored higher than this, uh, especially when compared to something like Exo Man that scored like six point two. Uh, uh, Black Bart got a three point six hmm. on IMDb, which I mean to me is fine, but. Comparatively to other things we've seen, it's it's out of whack. Well, I think I think the reason why those scores are going to be low is people are not going to rate it high nowadays because of the racism. Maybe so. Yeah, that's going to people are like oh god, I really would like to, you know, yeah, I'm, I, I I better give this a really low score because they said the word n three and a half times. Oof. Um, here's a critics review by Master Slim: three out of ten. Uh, Black Bart is the highest paid black sheriff in the county. Well, he's the only one, but he's struggling to integrate himself with the townsfolk, especially the mayor and his errant son, Curly. Was he his, was it son? No, it was his, his nephew. Uh, curious, unaired footnote to comedy classic Blazing Saddles. Someone perhaps understandably thought a small screen spinoff would be a sure thing, but when the same person overlooked the fact that Blazing Saddles was funny... Uh, Louis Gossett, not known for his comedic brilliance, but it, it doesn't help that he's uh, given a script without any gags. And to be fair, uh, he, uniquely among the cash, shows uh, useful charisma. Aside from that, this is awful. Is it just me, or does Millie Slavin look like a dude? 
And I'm not sure which one. Do you know who Millie Slavin was? Well, there's only one woman in that whole show. Oh, the, oh, the woman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, she maybe she had a jawline that was questionable. Yeah, they, they had a lot of makeup on her. I, I'm 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 struggling to uh, see her like see her neck in my mind. I don't know if it's covered up by frills, but there could have been Adam's apple bobbing around in there. Could be. Um, here's some here's some funny reviews. Actually, these are just the the um, titles of the reviews. Okay. Um, Nowhere near as funny as the movie is based upon. Black Bart is okay, but it's no Blazing Saddles. Could have been a contender. Can't make it to television. Horrendous TV pilot. Um, virtually laugh-free. Good idea, but need more work. Failed pilot based on t- Blazing Saddles. TV show not good. <laughs> a strange misfire. This is not Black Bart. Uh, like a wet fish in the face. Worst, sh- worst show ever. Putrid. Crap. Um, I don't think I laughed once. Um, it's not funny at all and features the the N-word at least three times within the first three minutes. No wonder it, it never got aired. So it's pretty unanimous sure. to me that this was uh, panned widely. Um, let's, let's you and I talk about how we feel about this show. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCI Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort... Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. One being the worst, seven being the best. Based on the characters from the classic 90s television show Wings, what what do you give? What number out of seven do you give this show? I don't know. Uh, a four. Four? That's a Joe Hackett. Highly responsible, compulsively neat pilot. Played by Tim Daly. Is it a four? I, I think if you take the N-word out, it was a uh, four. Okay. Uh, I think it's unusual, but I'm going to actually give it a three. I'm going to give it a little less than you. I think I usually score a little bit higher than you. And that and again, that's an Antonio Scarpacci, mild-mannered, differential, and hopelessly romantic. Um, again, not the worst thing we've seen, but not very good. No. Not well-written. Not I, very I, funny. I think I gave it a four because uh, I'm, 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 I'm scoring it without the N-word because the rest of the jokes, whatever. Uh, the film, I guess the copy that we saw was good. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, the, the quality, yeah, was, the quality was, and, and, and Lou did a good job. The, the, he was all the, right. Yeah. He, he was, but I bet you he changed his name to Lewis Gossett Jr. <laughs> after this. <laughs> to distance himself yeah, from, from, wow, I, I can't believe I did that. I, that is a good question. I wonder if there are actors and actresses out there who have changed their, their screen names depending on the failure of a project. Could be. Um, I don't know. It's um, a lot of work, though. Got to get your license. A lot of papers to sign. Too yeah. many. Well, papers. you got an assistant, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to change my name to what? Huh? Blay Clayton? No, no, no. What would you change your name to? Philip. Mm-hmm. Rest assured. Worcestershire. Rest assured. Rest assured. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think when people say it, like Philip, rest assured, like they're like, oh, this guy is it's, it's cool. It's just relax. It's going to be all right. Maybe. Just, no confrontation. Just rest uh-huh. assured. Wow. Um, yeah, look for that, I guess, coming up. Um, <laughs> the podcasting god. Oh, <laughs> Philip, rest assured. Rest assured. <laughs> um, are you all right? I worry about you. All right. Uh, join us next time on Couch Pilots when we watch the pilot episode of 1974's Evil Knievel. I loved it. A oh, real spoiler alert. Loved it. Um, here's a little something to wet your whistle. Knievel, come tomorrow. We're going to run you out of that arena. Evil Knievel, stuntman supreme, setting records, thrilling crowds, and now battling the worst evil of all, crime. You can find the entire episode of Evil Knievel on YouTube. Just search Evil Knievel TV Show or check our show notes, and we'll give you a link right there. It's the blue link. Some of the links are different colors. Not this one. Blue. You can always know that when I on Couch Pilots brings you 
a link, mm-hmm. it's going to be blue. That's right. And you know that that's not going to go somewhere it shouldn't go. Uh, so another spoiler alert, Evil Knievel, real person, Evil Knievel the show, stars Sam Elliott. Yes, Sam Elliott, a young Sam Elliott. Very handsome. If you're, if you, When you hear Sam Elliott, if you think big, white, bushy mustache, and a cowboy hat on. You can kick that to the curb. Kick it to the curb. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give you factual information <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna make you see him in a different light. We're gonna take every piece of Sam Elliott information that you have and throw it out the window, okay. start from scratch and build you back right. up. Right. We're like you you don't know, Sam. <laughs> yeah, not like not like us. Uh I think <laughs> this was uh I think it was Samuel Elliott. Oh another name change. Uh <laughs> If uh, if you have any questions about how to spell Sam Elliott's name or what his name has been in the past or even will be in the future, please send us an email at couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. Send us all your questions and comments, suggestions, uh, upcoming shows that you would like to see be done. We're pretty loose on this. We've got a pretty good idea of what we're going to do. But um, if, we, it, if it meets our criteria, we're down a clown. That's exactly right. We want to uh, we want to appease the masses, but you know, still have a structured program. That's not too much to ask. No. We don't ask a lot. No, I... I I ask more from my dog than I ask from the listeners. What's the last thing you asked of your dog? I said, will you please take the garbage out? And? She just looked at me. Wow. Unacceptable. That's why I don't own a dog. I do, have a, I do own a toad. How, did you ever ask that toad to do stuff? I said, uh, I'm going to dump all these flies in here. Eat all of these flies. Does it every time. Wow. Like frog work. You're like the, you're like the frog whisperer. <laughs> I am like... Screw the bottle cap kid. I'll be the frog whisperer. Go to fcfnetwork.com. Check out all of our shows there. Couch Pilots, Sex with Heather, Drunken Lullabies, The Song Inside Out, S&M Radio, The Titular, IBWIP. Uh, they're all there. They're all there for you for free. For free. And there's a wide variety of stuff. If you don't like us, which I, I, it doesn't make sense, but maybe you like one of the other ones. Don't, don't grade all the other shows based on us. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think we're I think we're a good show. I think we're structured. We have a lot of fun here. Give a lot of opportunities for uh, where else are you going to get a free flight? That you yeah. you, you cannot go on any. You can go to Travelocity dot com, Kayak dot com, uh, Expedia dot com. You are not going to get a free flight like this flight. The only, the only other place I think you get a free flight is if you sit in for one of those timeshare meetings where they try to get you to buy a timeshare. But that's not fun. This is fun. We're fun. We're fun. We're having fun right now. And if you sign. This contract today mm-hmm. with us, right? There'll be fun in your future for free for years to come. For fun, fun for free for years. Check us out, uh, fcfnetwork.com. We hope to see you there, and we hope to see you next time on Couch Pilots. Love you. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.